thanks. I'm going to talk today about WZO2's open source philosophy and give some more details on how we're thinking about open source. And as we heard from Sanjeeva, we really feel that open source matters more than ever today. Um, back in the old days, when we were using open source to contrast ourselves with Oracle, we talked a lot about vendor lock-in uh, as one of the reasons why you might want to choose open source. Uh, but honestly, a vendor-customer relationship is, is pretty hard to, to uh, break, even when you have a trusted vendor. And today, I think the value of open source is better encapsulated in a term like software independence. And we have a crazy world today. There's all kinds of geopolitical forces. There's government uh, forces, new regulations coming in. There's data sovereignty laws and policies and uh, goals that companies have. Um, a lot of uh, areas in the world have been subject to extreme economic shocks, even based on some of the uh, current events. And all of those can really make it hard to maintain your infrastructure if you don't have a lot of flexibility and independence in how you manage and control and deploy and own your own software. Uh, and we're only seeing the pace of change accelerating. So we really feel like now is still a great time to be looking for open source solutions, to be adopting open source solutions in this kind of changing environment. And, you know, WSO2 has always been a strong promoter of open source. And, you know, wh why, why do we like open source? The number one reason is we really believe that open source leads us to develop better software, that model where we have a, lot, a broad set of stakeholders out in the, in the industry using our software and providing feedback. It really helps make sure that open source software is the most flexible and extensible and adaptable uh, technology around there to directly meet the needs of a very large, diverse set of users. And as open source has developed uh, great distributed, globally distributed development models. We believe that we can really develop software faster. We can bring in best, better technologies from other op open source projects. We have a, a good way to collaborate among very large teams and get things done and make decisions in a broadly distributed way. It's actually quite a fantastic governance model. And we really have found, and I think many in the industry have found that open source just leads to faster innovation and you know, over the last 20 years, many of the big innovations in you know, uh, cloud native, native technologies, new kinds of databases and models, and even AI, a lot of that innovation is happening in, in open source. And we believe it's because open source is the best way to uh, broadly uh, uh, spur innovation. So that's one thing. We just think open source is the uh, best way to get high quality software. Uh, we also think that it really is important that we do have this need to meet uh, meet the demands for software independence in the market. You know, we have uh, customers in 90 plus countries. I'm sure we have users in many more. So it's important that uh, we have options in the industry and in the world for people to choose uh, the most independent thing they can they can get. They have their the control over their software when they use open source. And, you know, honestly, you can tell from Sanjeeva, we just believe open source is the right thing to do. We think it, it's uh, the more equitable thing. It's the best way to take innovation and share it broadly among the world to help other people learn from what you've done. Uh, we think there's a lot of users who need the software, but maybe really can't afford a commercial option and they shouldn't be precluded from having great software solutions. And then, you know, we also mentioned, we believe that as an open source company, we really have a lot of benefits for the employees to empower them, you know, within the corporate structure and outside the corporate structure in different communities and in their uh, reputation and their careers. So I think it's just, a, we feel it's really the right thing to do and it's deeply ingrained in WSO2. And that's why we really don't see that much change in, in our open source policy. And so I'll just repeat our open source uh, policy, which is, you know, we do, we develop software and we also have, uh, deploy SaaS systems, but anything that's not in our SaaS system, if we write software that can be downloaded, 
then we release that as open source. We don't uh, hold back certain features. All of our uh, functionality is in the open source. So we're not an open core model where some functionality is open source, but if you really need to use it for anything serious, you don't have the features that you need. So we just don't do that. All of our software, all features are available open source. And then on top of that, we continue to apply the Apache license as a uh, one of the most popular uh, open source licenses. Because it's so popular, people can rely on it, they understand it, they don't have to think very hard, they don't have to get legal approval before they try or even use the software. And uh, it's very permissive, there's no copyleft provisions that might give, uh, give you a concern. So it's... We have always used this uh, very permissive framework because it is truly the most open. And then not only do we deliver as open source, but we really try and practice open source governance uh, policies. We've really adopted the Apache way, uh, which is a governance model. So for instance, when you join WSO2 as a software engineer, you are not automatically given commit rights to the project. You have to earn those, and you don't earn them from Sanjeeva saying you're good enough to commit you have to convince the other members inside WSO2 or outside WSO2 that you have contributed enough uh, and helped enough with the project that you've earned the committer status to, to uh, practice that. And it really permeates our entire culture with open communication. Uh, we make, we uh, make some of our financial results uh, available openly. We have very broad uh, uh, mailing lists inside the company so people can comment on any aspect of, of our uh, co company and of course it really gives us a a beautiful surface to the the company that's also permeable in that we have uh, people outside the, the company who are able to contribute to our products and to work with us both former wso 2 employees who have gone on to other things but can still engage with the open source and also other individuals and companies that uh that come and want to work with us so that's always essentially been our open source policy and it really hasn't changed. And uh, I just want to talk a little bit more about our business model as well. Um, because, you know, even when I joined the uh, WSO2, it seemed a little counterproductive to say, we're going to invest tons of money in build great software and then give it away for free. How do you fund the development if, if you're giving away the software for free? So we've built a, a very effective business model on, on that. And it's, it's really quite clear. There's a line where when we develop software and we release it open source, we put it out there and you can come and get it, but it's as is. Where you take the software, it's up to you to, to deploy it, to manage it. Uh, you can access the, the community to learn how to, how to use it or to get advice. But uh, on the other side, we have essentially an enterprise class uh, software business. So if you I want to deploy the software easily, but also have support systems. You want to make sure you're constantly getting bug fixes, uh, security updates, security bulletins. You want access to the experts in our team to help you architect the solution better. And then other uh, aspects such as um, uh, uh, you know, managed services, other consulting things, hosting as a private cloud, all of these uh, aspects are things that we put ongoing effort in with our with our customer base. And when you need those capabilities, if you have a policy or you just recognize the value of those, then you really fall on our, our commercial side and we do our very best to give you the best service uh, on that side and make sure that you are completely successful uh, by partnering up with us and our experts on the side. And then we also have some SaaS uh, offerings and. The, uh, it's a small part of our business as yet, but we can generate from revenue uh, from that as well. But you know, having a clear line between our open source software is freely available, full enterprise uh, functionality, permissive license, but it's as is um, because we really do need to spend our corporate time working with our our corporate customers in order to fund that. And I don't want to put any judgment uh, on those two classes. We're very happy to have people use us open source. And there's many people who really couldn't use us unless they were able to use us open source. We're perfectly happy. In fact, we encourage that use, but also we recognize that we have valuable services and we can build a business on that side, which helps fund the whole enterprise. So I just wanted to explain, you know, how we can be both committed to a profitable, growing, thriving business and also committed to uh, freely available open source software. 
it's a fine line. And I think we've done pretty good at navigating that line. I have to say though, you know, I've been with the company almost 18 years uh, to really trying to especially build that open source business uh, aspect. And it's hard, hard work. You know, we have um, given away some of the levers that a typical software company uh, retains uh, in order to uh, build business and to generate revenue and to have control over their revenue. So for instance, it's very hard for us to uh, strong arm our customers with license terms because if our license terms aren't fairly flexible, then the customer will just go and use the open source instead. And we can't, the value that we have, our churn rates are very low for our uh, customer base. And that's because we don't rely on license you know, license provisions, we really rely on an ongoing high received value for the services that we provide. And that's what keeps our churn low, not because we have a license and, and you can never uh, get out of, of the license terms. And again, we a lot of open source companies build their business by withholding those essential enterprise functions. And they have an open core model where you think you're getting open source and you start with open source, but really when you start to do anything serious, they have their license hooks in you and you again we just haven't we haven't retained that ability to force our customers to purchase from us once they need those those functionalities and you know because we have a the fully functional product available for free we really are obligated i think and expected to have a reasonable price structure and so we try and do that um you know in different markets in different situations maybe our initial price uh it doesn't seem as low as it, it could be we have, uh, I think, looking at the, our largest customers, they're really quite uh, modestly priced compared with a, a lot of our competition in a, a lot of the world. So we, it really does uh, put an obligation on us to keep our prices very reasonable, and we take that very seriously and work hard to make sure that we are compensated for the value that we're providing, but we're not you know, squeezing more, more money than the value we're providing. Um, we really have a trouble, uh, a lot of companies use their pricing model. If they need to generate cash push, they can just squeeze their licensees for a lot more revenue and the licensees can't do anything because they would have to abandon the software, start all over and do something different. You know, but we have our open source available. It's incumbent on us to make sure not only do we have a value, but we don't try and squeeze more value out of that on, for a short term gain for the company. We, you know, some of uh, the uh, vendors in the past were kind of known for having abusive relationships. Once they have the licenses in though, you had no choice. You had to do what they wanted to do. You know, we do sometimes have to make changes. We have maybe price uplifts. We change some of our terms, but we have to be conscious that we, uh, we need to do that in a, in a way that's fair and respectful because we don't have full control uh, over you. The, the power in the, in the relationship prevents that kind of uh, vendor of, um, of abuse. And another really important aspect is, you know, the funding of the company. So many VC firms and the Silicon Valley model is you have a good idea, you pump in just billions of VC money in order to pump the, the uh, product up, you get it up to the top of the hype cycle, and then the investors and the founders maybe leave with their buckets of money and everybody else is left holding the bag and it's uh, the sell off the assets to some other company uh, and the product just deteriorates after that you know it's very uh, our the constraints of our open source business make it very hard to grow revenue so rapidly so we have to have very patient investors and of course all of our employees are shareholders and we have um, so very select set of investors who are not typical vcs with an exit horizon they're interested in long-term value so it is hard to build the open source business, but I think we've done a good job. And let me just hit a, a few of our metrics for our uh, business success. You know, we started in 2005 and we've had steady growth since then. Uh, I think that's been good. We've been able to build a very strong and solid reputation. If you look at the analyst reports and our position in the market and, and the awareness of WSO2 as a quality provider, uh, we have a very strong reputation there. Uh, I think our brand and uh, recognition 
uh, is might be a little lower than some of our competitors, but among the people who, who matter, the analysts who are looking at the industry and the, and the folks who are uh, looking at industry in depth, we have a very good uh, reputation. Most people come to us by searching uh, uh, on Google for WSET2. That's our number one uh, keyword. So it's clearly not coming from ads or something else. It's coming from the brand reputation that WSO2 has been able to build over the last, you know, coming up shortly on 20 years. We also have had a model where we've been consistently self-funded. We have not accepted tons and tons of investment money to quickly expand the market with a lot of advertising and then have users pay for that down the road once the, our user base gets established. We've been able to, to maintain profitability and take our profits, reinvest them in the company uh, in a very, very conservative and stable way to make sure that we're a company that is resilient to changes in interest rates and venture uh, capital trends and things like that. And it really helps us uh, maintain a solid and uh, steady growth over time. Another aspect is we appeal globally. You know, many companies start in the U.S. and only when they get established, they'll go and try and pick up some revenue in other geographies. The nature of open source has made us available worldwide, and we've, we've uh, got customers alone in 90 countries around the world, partners in many of those countries, and, of course, open source users in probably even more countries than that. So we have we have a very broad user base uh, globally. We're not really... Uh, centered or heavyweight in any one region. And over the 20 years, you know, we've built one of the largest independent uh, uh, open source uh, companies that, that's ever existed. You know, many of the famous open source companies that, that went on to get to be sold, you know, the MySQLs, the, the um, um, Mules and things like that, they were, uh, they're all smaller than, than we are now. So I think we're very proud of where we've gotten. It's, been hard work. We've uh, had limited uh, ability to, you know, put thumb screws on our customers. We just had to continually build good value and uh, build a very sustainable business. So I want to just talk a little bit about what we're, why we're having this conference and uh, what our open source strategy is in 2024. Um, we wanted to reinvigorate our message around open source. We feel like the industry and the hype about uh, SaaS and with kind of the commoditization of open source and the prevalence of open core models, the message of the value of open source to have high quality software uh, at a very reasonable uh, price and uh, available availability globally is has gotten lost a little bit. And that message of being able to meet the need for software independence among among users. So well, one thing we wanted to do is really hit that again. Uh, not only has the industry neglected it, we got kind of excited about our SaaS and maybe we dropped a few uh, opportunities to really promote our core open source values as well. So we want to rectify that and uh, have a, a way to engage with our community again. We also, of course, want to expand our open source uh, user base. So if you're an open source user, thank you very much. If you have friends or colleagues uh, who could benefit from using us open source, please recommend it to them. We do want to have a, a strong uh, user base of open source users out there in the industry. We also just wanted to try and improve our engagement with open source users. You know, our commercial model is if you get the software as is uh, if you're open source and, and we do a lot of engagement if you're a customer, that there's a lot of ways that we can engage with that open source community the, beyond uh, the kinds of activities we do for the, uh, the commercial side. You know, we can do more to promote skills uh, development in the open source community. So more uh, access to training and certification, more awareness about the opportunities for training and certification. We want to encourage uh, more word of mouth uh, activities among our open source user base. Let's see if we can collect case studies. If you have an interesting story to tell, we'd love to share that with other open source users, share it with all WSO2 users, and you know get some promotion for you and the good work you're doing, and we can benefit as well from seeing uh, what you're doing out there. Uh, things like review sites are uh, increasingly important. Gartner has Gartner Peer Insights. That's a very important source of information for a lot of, of people who are selecting uh, technologies. There's G2 Crowd, other areas. So 
these independent review sites or independent content like blogging or tweeting or writing articles, all those things are really great ways that we can, you know, we can engage with the community. You can help us. We're happy to work with you. So if, for instance, you have some technical content you're interested in getting published, let us know. We can see if we can find a way to, to help promote that and, and get it out there for the benefit of all of our user community. And I do want to uh, think a little bit more this year on how we can make it easier for open source uh, users to become co commercial customers, but only when they need it. If you find that you need uh, more highly engaged, more managed, more access to experts, more access to a constant stream of, of patches, getting out of the uh, constant need to upgrade uh, to the next version in order to get new functionality and instead get bug fixes and security patches for a three plus year SLA. There's a lot of things that, uh, that are valuable there. And if you start as an open source user and you find the need for those things, we want to make it easy for you to, to, uh, to make that transition. But without any pressure, if you're not ready to make that tr uh, transition, we're not going to be uh, pressuring you. So I think it's something we need to learn is how to separate our commercial promotion uh, communications and our kind of open source community uh, communications. And this conference is kind of one way that we're trying to explore that. So if you have ideas, we'd love to hear from you as well. And so that's a bit of a summary about how we're thinking about open source, how we're thinking about the open source business. And I just want to thank you for using the WSO2 products and thank you for uh, seeking out a recommendation site. If you haven't, please do and put a positive recommendation on those sites. It's quite valuable uh, for you. Thank you for building your skills. Those are valuable uh, to have in the industry. It, if you have skills and their skills are available, it helps our commercial customers see that there's talent that can be acquired to help them with their WC2 projects. And again, if you have uh, case studies or if you would like to submit a talk or a case study to our upcoming WC2 con, we'd love to see that. And again, if you have ideas for how we can improve our communication, do you want to, uh, to communicate through chat or an email newsletter? What's uh, going to be a good way and a valuable way and a, an appropriate uh, level of, of information that we can engage with you more and understand what you're doing and how we can support you better? So thank you very much. Yeah.